Hey, Lewis. <laughs> all right. This is something I've wanted to do for a while. I actually have all of my cars here. None of them are broken, except for the Supra. That one is kind of apart right now. But they're all here, and a couple of the guys have their cars here at the shop, and I wanted to give you a shop tour. We do have some changes coming up to the shop, so I wanted to get like a good snapshot in time now of how the shop is. And I just wanted to give you guys a tour of my cars because a lot of you guys are newer followers and maybe you guys may not know, you know, what we've built and what we've done over the years. So we'll go ahead and start with the cars on the outside. We'll go ahead and start with my 2022 SEMA car. This is a um, Toyota GR86, and this was in the Toyota SEMA booth. So we've been working on this a lot recently. We actually had a chance to take it to the track a couple times, and I'm just developing it to be as fun to drive, reliable as possible. So it does have a HK supercharger and just yesterday we finally put the HKS FCON piggyback system on which unlocks the rest of the power for this supercharger. So now it's supposed to make 300 crank horsepower. We will take it to a dyno and we'll verify that. Who knows? I don't know how much it's actually going to make. We are running 100 octane in it now just because it's something that's available to us locally. And I just figured it's probably safer, especially this is mostly just a track car. I don't actually drive this on the street. I take it to the track. just really developing my driving skill. Um, part of it is because I honestly quit driving. I quit high performance driving. I quit autocross, time attack, all of that stuff to pursue photography. And after all this time, I'm able to drive again, which is really, really nice. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of one of the big reasons why we built this. Um, a couple of other things that we did since the SEMA show, we actually got with Motegi and they made me a custom set of wheels that, that can handle a wider tires. So these are 255s, AO52s squared, and it is so good. It has so much grip. It's just so much fun to drive. I actually took this to Chakwala and it was such a blast. Next up is the R32 GTR. Late last year, got back from Tommy F. Yeah, all the way from Connecticut. So now it is a full HKS 2.8 liter stroker motor. Um, we have the remade in the USA intake manifold. It looks absolutely brand new. They use all new hardware, all new gaskets, all that. It looks so good. It looks like a brand new unit from the factory. There's just so much to unbox on this build and we'll do a full video on this build soon, but 
my goal with this was just to have it super OEM plus, and I just wanted it to look as stock as possible with a stock airbox still. It even has this um, like fake mass airflow sensor from HKS, and you can kind of tell that there's something special with it because you can see HKS there. But it is a full standalone ECU now, full Haltech Elite 2500. Just love this build so much. So happy to drive this around LA. It's incredible. Parked next to it is Lewis's GC8. This is full STI swap. So the underneath it, including engine and full drive line, all of it is uh, 2005 Super STI, which I actually had a chance to drive the donor car. But now this is a full on 1998 updated Super STI, including all five lug and everything. Subframe, all of it was changed over. So this thing is so awesome. There's a cool little Easter egg right there. Next up, we have the Toyota trucks that I'll talk about. Uh, that is Tyler's E46 drift car that lives here. And then um, we'll talk about my FJ Cruiser. This is a 2007. This is the first off-road vehicle that I ever purchased. And this one is six-speed manual. Now this is supercharged. It has a Magnuson supercharger. So this one is fun in that I only use this for off-road shooting. So the only reason why it leaves the shop is to go to an off-road race and come back from an off-road race. And while we're actually at the off-road race, we're chasing the race. Because when you're shooting off-road racing, you essentially have to run your own race. You have to be able to go off-road as well and cut off the race vehicles as many times as you can to get more shots. And that's why I initially built this. It's on King Shocks. It's pretty much, as much as I can really do to this vehicle without doing some serious cutting, doing over fenders and all that stuff. Um, it is on 33s uh, on Yokohama MT tires, G003. Other than that, it sounds amazing. We've been taking it to the sand dunes recently. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's just such a fun truck to drive, especially on the street because it is six speed manual. Um, that is one of our video guys, Richard's um, Lotus Elise. That is not mine. I wish that was mine. It's super cool. If you guys are wondering what I drive daily, this is my daily driver, um, LX570 LC200 Land Cruiser. It does have alpha wheels on it. Alpha equipped, they're really, really cool. A good buddy of mine owns that company, but we're running on Geolander XATs. So they're not terribly loud compared to the MTs, but they have pretty good off-road grip, but I love this thing so much. So it has the same motor as the Tundra, which this was a Hoonigan Project Cars project. And now this one is also supercharged. So this one, um, I call it the Raptor Tundra because I wanted to build something that potentially could be like a Toyota version of, of a Raptor of the year. So this is a 2018 and let me just open this up for you guys. This is a 2018. Now with the Magnuson Supercharger, it makes 550 horsepower. This thing is so stout. I love this so much. It's on 37 inch tires. It's on BFGs and on real fuel beadlocks. These are actual beadlocks, so we can go down in tire pressure quite a bit. 
we can run whatever, 8 PSI, 10 PSI, if we're in the sand or if we're chasing off-road racing, but we actually use this to tow um, our open trailer. But it's a full-on King Shock setup, Camberg suspension, all of that. The wide body is uh, ADV fiberglass, and they actually use this truck to mold the, the rear quarters or the rear uh, bed sides out of, because for whatever reason, it wasn't really popular to build these, which is not the, the crew cab. This is just like the, the extended cab, you know, this is the cab where you can still have people in the back and it's not the most room, but of course, since we use this mostly for the track and to chase off-road racing, we don't actually need that much room inside. Um, it's more of just a, a good pickup truck and a good working vehicle. The reason why I cut this up um, and the reason why it was okay for me to, you know, get rid of the fenders and repaint it and all that is because this was actually wrecked. It was in a front end collision. And if you guys want to watch the series on Hoonigan Project Cars, you can see the entire build process for this, which was fun, but it was a long process. The last vehicle that I wanted to talk about outside is something that we've been using more and more. And this is the Easy Go Elite Golf Cart. Okay, so this is something that we've actually been using at events to, you know, get around, but we've also been using it for shooting. So we actually did like a full on GTR race car shoot with this and we towed the, the GTR. I sat in the back, I shot photos of it and video, and I actually photoshopped out the cord just so it looks like the vehicle was running but it actually wasn't, it was being towed by this easy go golf cart. And this is really handy, especially when we come back from drift events or some whatever reason we come back from an event and one of the cars are dead. We actually use this just to tow it around the property or around the shop. Um, so we'll just talk about the shop a little bit from the outside before we go inside. So the shop as it sits right now is only 1200 square feet. The building itself existed before I moved here, um, but this was all dirt. So we got all of this concrete done and we got the complete inside done. So it was just a storage shed before, but then we actually turned it into full fledged shop um, with the help from Ben Pack with the help from Ranger. So um, yeah, we'll just kind of start with the Supra. The Supra is up in the air right now because we're doing uh, exhaust. Um, we're doing a full HKS catback exhaust. The cool thing about the HKS exhaust is that it actually has the valve for you to go loud or quiet, depending on what you're doing. If you're driving around on the street or if you're at the track, when you push the sport mode button, this actually opens up and then that way it routes the exhaust out of the right side as well as the left side. So I'm excited to put this in, but right now we're just on a holding pattern. Um, when we have some time, we'll actually put that on. But in terms of the lift, this is a Ben Pack lift and it is rated to 10,000 pounds and it is pretty tall. So it's 14 feet tall, I think, or 13 and a half feet tall. Um, but the nice thing about this, since it's rated for 10,000 pounds, it actually can lift all of our vehicles, including the Tundra without a problem at all. But it's a great two post lift. We love it so much. It is just so useful. It is really cheating to have something like this in a shop. This is kind of like the product section that we have here at the shop. This is a fun little thing that I got at Barrett Jackson. It's just like this uh, pencil. It's actually real glass, but it's super cool. Um, somebody got this quart of oil 
for me. I don't even know what year this is from, but it looks super old and it still has oil in it. But all of our products are here that we normally use, all the Canaan filters for all the cars, um, all of Penn's oil, oil. And then um, of course uh, we use Leno's garage detailing products. Um, you can get these at Walmart, but we have them just on our shelf whenever we need to clean our cars or clean a car for a shoot. This is really cool. Somebody actually found this for me. A gallon of gasoline. It says dots and saves, but apparently back in the 70s, because of the fuel crisis, when you bought a Datsun or like a 240Z, they would give you this with a full gallon of gas because it says Datsun saves about a gallon of gasoline a day. So cool. Um, so that's the product section. We've got a bunch of Type S things like Type S jump packs, a bunch of Type S uh, underglow. Pretty much most of my cars have Type S underglow. I think the only vehicle that I have that doesn't have Type S underglow are the trucks, which I'm guessing that's probably gonna change soon. And then also my Porsche, everything else has Type S underglow because uh, underglow's back in a big way. A lot of AM boxes, more Type S. This is, there's like a party in a box right here when you push this. That's super cool. But the tool box is a snap-on box. This thing is super handy. It has these really cool drawers that actually have power. So that way everything is plugged in, everything charges. So everything is as organized as possible. Um, I've always wanted a box like this. And finally, after pretty much saving up my entire life, I finally have a shop that I can work out of and enjoy cars out of. So yeah, now we have a full on snap on everything for all of our working needs. It's just, it's just so useful, it's just so cool. There's so much space in this thing for everything. We have like drawers for different things like parts, fuses, lug nuts, whatever. Just a different drawer for everything. Love this box. Oh, there's also this really cool feature. This has this light. So then everything's all lit very nicely when you need to find that tool. There's also power plugs and stuff in the workbench area, which is really useful. Um, all the tables, uh, including the tire machine, all of the other accessories like these jack stands, lifts, um, oil collector, transmission jack, everything else is all Ranger slash Ben Pack. They're really good people to work with. They're actually located in Southern California. And when they heard that I was building this shop, they really wanted to help out. So it's been incredible to work with them for all of that. Of course, you can't talk about my shop and my stuff without talking about the 240Z. <laughs> Tyler and Lewis are rigging it up right now. We're actually gonna do a shoot with this, which I'm sure you guys will see that project soon. So they're gonna rig it up for some cool camera shots. But now that this one is fully restored, you can actually watch the full restoration series. I told myself I wouldn't race it anymore, but I lied, of course. I've been racing it. I've been taking it to corner exit autocross and it's been so much fun to actually drive this 10 tenths again. Wow, that is some camera setup that you put there. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. It's funny because you got this uh, Canon 1DX Mark III camera here, and then the Type S camera yeah, is like shooting backwards. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting look. But um, yeah, now it's pretty much fully restored. There's just a couple more things I need to do in terms of updating the interior. The interior dash is something I need to restore. That's actually a dash cap and it looks pretty good, but um, I would really love to get a real dash or one that's restored. But these guys are 
mounting a camera on the Sabon hood. That's going to be a very cool angle too. So just to back up a little bit so you guys can see kind of the full look of what the shop looks like. It's really small. We can fit six cars in here pretty comfortably. Um, we'll usually park three cars here, one car here, and then we can park two cars on top of each other on the lift and that one just goes right in this slot right in front of the lift. But generally speaking, we try to shuffle them around the ones that need to be worked on. You know, we'll put in the lift area. Two more cars that I wanted to touch on. Um, this is my 996 Turbo. I bought this in 2014 and I've been building it since then. In my eyes, this is pretty much the last Porsche or one of the last generations where you can actually work on yourself. Um, of course, the 997, you can still see the engine bay and you can still work on yourself, but the 996 is of course a little more affordable and it is just of that era where they're transitioning from air-cooled to water-cooled. And this thing is just so easy compared to a lot of other European cars that I've worked on. Very reliable, very fun to drive, makes lots of power. And uh, yeah, I love driving it. I've pretty much started converting everything to like a GT3 spec. So like the seats are GT3 seats. They're GT3 Recaros. They're kind of like the alien looking ones. I love them so much. They're so comfortable and they really hold you in. The back seats are, I converted them to black. They were gray, um, but these are like the millennium generation seats, I think. The normal ones kind of have like this soft leather and it doesn't have that texture, but I love the way those look. I think they came on the 2000s. Other GT3 things like GT3 shifter, shift knob, center console delete, that's all GT3. I love the way that looks. I love the one piece dash look. GT3 steering wheel, just a lot of fun GT3 bits. It sounds incredible. I love the way it sounds and of course the way it drives. Uh, the HRE wheels, super cool. I think that those were actually my first mod, but I just got Advan Apex tires on it after having 8008s and man, this thing, it just changed the way it drove so much. It was really held back by those tires. They're just uh, not as sticky as I'd like for, for the kind of driving I like to do with this car. This is more my Canyon Carver. This is more, as you can see, I drive it pretty hard. It's a lot of rock chips on it. I'm gonna have to replace that lip soon, especially because I hit like a manhole cover or something on the freeway. But uh, yeah, this thing is super fun. Last car is my 350Z drift car. Let's go ahead and pop the hood on this. This is pretty much a Z1 Motorsports parts catalog 350Z build. I just looked at what Z1 Motorsports had to offer and I pretty much just took everything that they made and we've tried to put it all in this one build. So this is pretty much as much as I can go without cracking the motor, right? So we actually did just dyno this and it made on a dyno pack 286 wheel horsepower which sounds a little low but it's pretty right these actually came with 305 i think to the crank stock and which which uh actually translated to about 240 245 to the wheels stock so this is a hr and this is a 2008. So it's the last year of the 350Z. So it is a, still a 3.5 liter, but it is a dual throttle, throttle bodies. And this one actually makes the most power out of all of the 3.5 liter VQ engines. So we did Z1 Motorsports intake manifold, Z1 Motorsports um, port and polish intake runners, 
Z1 headers, Z1 exhaust, Z1 intake uh, with k and filters. We've just done everything that we can power-wise to make as much power as possible out of this engine uh, with the Z1 Motorsports up rev tune and all that. But I just wanted to keep it reliable so we haven't cracked the engine, we haven't done cams, we haven't done um, any engine work, head work or anything like that. It is a drift car. It does sit at the rev limiter quite a bit, but this is my learning car. I've been drifting for about a year and a half and I decided at one point I really wanted to get into the sport because I'm just tired of watching everyone else have fun. So I run Motegi wheels on it. And uh, yeah, this thing is just so much fun. It's great because now I feel confident to get into pretty much any drift car and at least turn some laps. You know, if not, just do some donuts and figure eights. That's kind of what I wanted, you know. So I've been traveling quite a bit this year, especially for Haggerty series. And the opportunity actually comes up quite a bit. And I'm so honored to be able to drive all of these drift cars and different cars all over. <laughs> Aside from that, we just have like a Ranger press. Can we think of anything else? Oh, Viper chairs, forgot about those. We gotta talk about these. Yeah, cannot forget. Oh yeah, and the crazy cars. We, we, yeah, we gotta talk about crazy cars. So while they're getting the crazy carts out, I gotta talk about the Viper chairs. They're made in the US and they can custom make whatever color, whatever pattern, like they embroidered this which is so crazy. It comes neatly packaged. You assemble them yourself. They're so sturdy and so nice to use. We can use them as detailing chairs or I use them to film here all the time. We use them when we're working on cars. Um, they actually also make these cool little smaller rolling benches that are very sturdy. You could put like detailing products and stuff on here. It is so useful and it's, it is just a really well-built chair. Um, we were using a bunch of these cheap shop chairs uh, that we just got locally here and they would just fall apart after using them for a little bit. But look at these guys. You're about to run into some car here. I almost died. <laughs> I almost broke my <laughs> Oh my God. So the guys actually sessioned this, uh, you know, after staring at the computer, for a little bit, they need to session and get the... <laughs> they need to actually do some drifting because it's hard for us to take breaks and actually go to the drift track. You know, the drift track's pretty far. So what they like to do is take these crazy carts out and actually do some drifting just around the property. Look at these guys, incredible. No big deal, we're just riding these crazy cars around all these priceless cars. A <laughs> uh, couple other questions that you guys may have. This is my house. This is not like an industrial area or anything. This is my house. And this is something that I've saved up for my entire life to own and enjoy. But we do work out of here. And uh, yeah, we're in LA County, not too far from downtown LA. It's just a dream, you know, the fact that I can change my oil, I can work on my car, leave it on the lift, go in for dinner, come back out, work on the car, whatever, it's, it's crazy. The nice thing is we're all able to enjoy it. You know, all of us have drift cars, all of us like to play with cars and we come in here in, at midnight and change tires and all that and it's the most fun thing ever. Is it? <laughs> is, it? is it? I like it, I like changing my tires, yeah. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. We got a lot of changes coming up. I'm really excited. We're gonna do a bit of an expansion of the shop. 
which potentially could mean more builds and more fun car things. Um, every single year, I look forward to doing more and more stuff with Toyota. You know, they're really big supporters of what we do. And I love the brand so much. And we've built two SEMA cars for them now. I just want to keep it going and I want to try to do better every single time. And that's pretty much that. See you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.